started talking about exponential graphs and um, when we were graphing, right, so we came across some exponential growth, some exponential decay, but for all of the equations, the bases were, you know, regular, you know, run-of-the-mill numbers, right, either fractions less than one or a number greater than one. Um, all right, so today we're going to start talking about this natural base. Um, yesterday I gave you one, maybe two applications, right? Remember we talked about like bacteria growth and we talked a little bit about deficit. Um, well, exponential functions apply to like a whole bunch of, you know, different situations in real life. So most of them, once you start solving and you, you know, you start doing the math, um, a lot of times you run into a term that looks like this, 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x, right? 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. It just shows up all the time. And then lots of times what you want to do is you want to figure out what happens to this value if x is extremely large. So for example, if x is like a million, right? Then you have 1 plus 1 over a million to the power of a million. And at first glance, you think, oh my gosh, that's going to be like huge because it's something to the power of a million. But not really. What happens when you start looking at values here is these values start to increase, right, as x gets larger and larger, but then this levels off. And it levels off at this value 2.71828 and so on and so forth. That value, because it shows up so often, um, has a special symbol. It's the symbol E. It's named after a mathematician slash scientist. This is how you spell his name. Everybody, okay, so everybody says Euler, pet peep. It's Euler, all right? That's how you, that's how you say his name. Um, and it's, it's named after him, that's why it's got an E, right? And there is like, when you start doing calculus, there is Euler's method, there is Euler's approximation, there is Euler's formula and all that stuff. Um, he's responsible for a whole bunch of things. Okay, so that's where E comes from. That's why there is an E right there. It's E to the power of, okay? So E is um, 2.718 and so on. It's an irrational number, just like pi never ends, E is exactly like one of those. There are three constants like that. It's pi, e, and phi. Phi we don't really get to in high school, but e and pi we definitely Keep use. Keep the number five. No, no, pi. Phi. phi. Greek letter. Like, like, like stuff this. for okay. um, sororities and fraternities. So it's a Greek letter. All right, so here, um, one thing. All right, so here we're going to graph e to the x now. Okay. One thing I want to change here in example one, it says graph and analyze the function. We're going to do asymptotes, y-intercept, and so on. But this sentence here where it says use E approximately, whatever, erase that. You never saw it. It was never there. We, it was never there, okay? Because we don't want to do that. I know. We got to not see that anymore. Okay. So it's E to the X. Again, our asymptote, just like yesterday, is the default Y equals zero, right? Now, the y-intercept, it's going to be e to the power of 0. And remember what we said yesterday? What's anything to the power of 0? The 1. 1. So the y-intercept is 0, comma 1. Okay, let's just go and plot that. Okay? And when x is 0, y is 1. Okay, the rest, we're going to do it similar to how we did yesterday's functions. So here we have, again, all right, so is e to the x growth or decay? Growth, because e is greater than 1. So I pick these numbers again. So here I have e to the minus 1, e to the 0, e to the 1, e squared. Okay, so right now, take out your calculators. You're going to plug this in. Um, go ahead and find that button E, did you find it? It should be on the yeah. left-hand column. Three. Yeah, well, you can put it in reciprocal and then dot it. Um, no, because it's E. 
Okay, so. All right, so e to the negative 1 is 0 0.3678 and so on, right? Yes. Um, so, sorry, 0 0.367. Now, you're, the only purpose of this is for you to be able to graph it, okay? To us, 0 0.36 or 0 0.367 or, you know what, 0 0.4 if you're around, that it, they're all going to be graphed the same way. It's somewhere between 0 and 1. So 0 0.4 is good enough. Okay? What's e to the 0 then? 1. Okay, e to the 1, we just, I just it's said, what's e? Point, it's 2.7, 2. 2. 2. right? So we're going to have to memorize that. Just know that e is 2.71. It'll make your life easier. When you're working with e's, you will have a calculator available, but if you know that E is 2.7, and listen, by the time we're done with this chapter, you will just know what E is. So that's 2.7, and what's E squared? 7.4 is good enough, okay? And like everybody, you know, everybody knows E, is, e squared is just 7.4, right? So now you guys know. So if you're walking down the street and you get a tap on the shoulder, what's E squared? It's just 7.4. It's gonna make your life so much easier, all right? Because so often, so often like people, you know, when they're using the calculator, like you just hit the wrong number, and you're, you're rushing, just, no. Okay, what's the domain? This is an exponential function, all real numbers, and the range, y is greater than zero. Okay, so when you go to graph this, at x is negative one, y is 0 0.4. Okay, again, we're not looking for NASA precision. And you know what? You can't. Given you and a pencil, like given just a pencil, you can't really graph that, that precisely. Just make sure it's between 0 and 1. 1 is 2.7, so somewhere here. And then at 2, we're at 7.4 right there. And since you've done yesterday's homework, you're an expert at graphing these, and there you go. So nothing really different. It's very easy based on what we did yesterday. The only difference is your bases are now E's. Okay? You're substituting E's. Right. So, no, that's not it. We're going to do this one. Um, well, actually, I'll rephrase that. I'll, I'll rephrase that. I'm going to start you off, and then you're going to do this one. So here you have an um, E to the 2x plus 3. Okay, so quickly, what is the function of that plus 3? What does it do? It makes it go vertically up. Up by 3 or units. Verti or vertically down. Right. So plus 3 goes up. And what did you say about the asymptote, Brennan? Y equals 3. Um, so y-intercept, same situation. E to the 0 plus 3 is 4. All right. Yeah, where oh, do you okay. go? Because it's 2x. So when you put in 0, it's 2 yeah. <laughs> Right? Okay, so go ahead and plug these in. Wait, so I'll stop this for a second. So here, at oh, x oh, equals oh, negative 1, it's 3.1. Um, oh, so then it goes up like that. Okay, here. It's 3.1. And then y equals 4 right there. Okay, so now look. At x equals 1, the number is 10.4. So right there, right? So do you see how steep it really has to be? Oh, I made it like not that steep. Yeah. Do your best. Make sure these points are accurate. All right. So the range is what then? y is? Greater than 3. Okay? All right. So go ahead and do C. Um, don't move past C. We'll regroup after C, and then I'll, I'll let you move past. All right. So that's C. Okay, so D. Before you start doing anything for the next one, okay? Is it growth or decay? It's growth. It's growth, but is, is, it, grow, is it upwards or downwards? So facing down. up or down? Facing down, where is it going to start? What's the asymptote? Negative 4. Negative 4, right? So it's going to face down from negative 4. All right, so go ahead and do that and see if you get something consistent with what you figured out.